far and blink LEDs on the Android device itself. But this is um, uh, this notification API for the EDK is, is designed to uh, allow you to control the enunciators on a remote device, for instance, the RS6000 here. Um, uh, it allows you to control the multicolor LEDs, uh, being able to specify an RGB color and flash that LED on and off, depending on the color. Um, also, we, you can control haptic feedback on the on the ring scanner uh, by controlling its vibrator motor. Uh, you can uh, specify up to eight different vibrate patterns, um, or have it you know vibrate for a specific amount of time. You can also control uh, the device's beeper. Um, and again, uh, define up to eight beat patterns, uh, configuring its time and frequency. Uh, a couple of other things that we've added in the notification API to allow you to kind of close the loop is to know what what type of notification device is connected. Uh, once you've got a notification object, you can query that object to find out uh, what type of notifications it's capable of. Um, that, that comes into play when we be, uh, because you've, we've also have a, a corded external vibrator that um, uh, adds support for uh, hearing impaired users. Uh, one of the issues with the uh, RF6000 is that it, it is, of course, attached to your arm via um, a wrist strap. And when you use, you know, the, the 6000 does have uh, uh, haptic feedback and vibration built in, but uh, that vibration gets deadened. Um, uh, by all the strap and all the material, uh, the material making it comfortable in your arm will also make that vibration uh, less uh, less felt. So uh, I don't have a picture of it here, but we have an extor external uh, device that allows you to get that vibrator motor closer to your skin. Um, so that that query, being able to query those devices would allow you to find out whether it's capable of doing something before you you know try to make it do so. So uh, you could ask the you know the notification device whether it's uh, capable of flashing LEDs or uh, has the beeper or not, which, you know, of course, if you had the just the external uh, corded vibrator attached, uh, it would just return back that it was only capable of, of, uh, of vibrating. Um, next, we've uh, made some enhancements to the barcode API uh, a lot to allow for uh, use of um, the, uh, the Bluetooth scanner. Uh, I'm sorry, the R6000 Bluetooth scanner. We already had support for an R507 uh, ring scanner, legacy device, um, but we've added um, some support to be able to identify that device um, uh, once it's once it's paired and connected. Uh, the R for the R6000, we've added a new dev device identifier, a Bluetooth Imager R6000, and for the uh, R4000 1D ported ring scanner. Um, we've added the pluggable laser one and a, and a new connection type of pluggable SSI. Um, the R6000 has connectors on the right and left side of the device that allows you to plug in multiple different accessories. So um, that's where you would actually attach this R4000. Uh, something new that we've we've added as well um, to be able to uh, understand whether your an external device is connected or external scanner is connected or disconnected. We've added. A, um, a scanner connection listener, which you would um, add it to your activity def definition and uh, uh, add some callbacks to to get when this device, either devices, uh, the scanners have connected and disconnected, and, and will return some objects allowing you, you to inspect and um, understand which device disconnected, for instance, and uh, and uh, modify your code or, or do something accordingly. Um, Next, we've made some changes to Profile Manager, uh, which is uh, an addition of a new uh, configuration service provider, a uh, remote scanner manager that, uh, as of now, only supports the R6000. Uh, but what that allows you to do uh, through our profiles is uh, apply a 123 uh, scan config, um, update the firmware on that remote device, it allows you to reset the scanner and page the scanner, which um, would allow you to locate the device if it's lost, basically allow you to take the scanner and have it, uh, its beeper go off and lights light up and uh, help to help you find it. And you can also disconnect the scanner or unpair the device. I'm sorry about misspelling there. Um, and lastly here, we've got made some changes to the, uh, along with the barcode API changes, we've made changes to the uh, data capture profiles that allow you to um, uh, Add, add some new Bluetooth, uh, new, new devices. So uh, the Bluetooth imager, which I believe is uh, for legacy support for the RS-507, uh, 
the new pluggable laser, which would be for the RS4000, and a new RS6000 Bluetooth imager device value. And then we've also allowed uh, add some some features to um, set the uh, the mode in which the your you get audio and LED feedback on the device. Whether uh, we're going to allow whether you want it to only be locally on the on the on the Android device. Or on, only on the remote device, or both, or completely disable um, that audio feedback and LED feedback. Uh, we also allow you to control the uh, whether the aiming pattern is displayed or not. When the R6000 is um, in scan mode, it will turn on, turn off the, the aiming pattern, and we can also set the the imager brightness. Uh, so that's kind of a a high level look at all the changes we've made to to bring the uh, Support for the WT6000 and and the new scanners as well. And uh, now I'm going to turn this over to Manuel uh, for some uh, printer SDK updates. You ready, okay. Manuel? I'm ready. All right. Let me grab our view control. All right, man. Okay. Um, could you give me a confirmation of? Can yep. you see my screen, uh, guys? I see your screen. Very good. Uh, hello, everybody. So um, my name is Manuel Caicedo. I work with the ISB team in Chicago area. Um, basically, my responsibility is to help developers with the integration, um, validate their apps in the printing side. So today I'm going to be covering um, basically um, the updates that we have done to our LinkOS um, uh, development tools. And we were covering several aspects of those updates. We're going to be showing the agenda for basically for this presentation will be just uh, show the new features that we have added to the SDK 2.11 release. After that, I want to talk about how we can just print this to practice uh, with the printers in Bluetooth uh, low energy. And we want to talk about a little more about graphic conversions, profile, and multi-channel. And we want to do just a coding review. And at the end, we want to just uh, do a refresh of the other tools and features that we have. So the objectives that we want to uh, with this presentation for today is learn how to identify printers in Bluetooth uh, low energy and how to uh, work with them and familiarize with Bluetooth low energy graphics conversion profiles and multi-channel. Um, we want to check those things with sample code. And um, also how those things affect our several best practices and, uh, and how we want to recommend you work with Bluetooth low energy. So let's start it. So basically, um, all of this is uh, covering what we have been done before with uh, all of the smart printers that we have and uh, the powerful uh, and robust API that we have covering many different uh, aspects. But basically, what we want to go uh, for this presentation is just review uh, basic captions that we have done during this year. One of those is uh, just to mention then that we have just uh, released the car driver SDK. We have done the LinkOS SDK version 2.10 with Xamarin. And now we uh, just uh, released uh, in June uh, LinkOS SDK version 2.11. The new browser print development tool that just we just uh, released uh, two, uh, one month ago, Android setup set, uh, setup utility and PDF uh, PDF direct. But basically today we want to cover uh, uh, we will will be focused on LinkOS SDK version 2.11. So our SDK covers basic uh, features. Our core basically are uh, combined of, of different things. We have printer discovery, printer connectivity, printer status checking, phone conversion, graphic conversion, that's the new thing, uh, template filling, uh, printer management, command mode, simplify pairing. And uh, all of these core features that we have um, basically um, comes with um, developer demos, sample code, and documentation. With the release that we did for uh, July 2000 uh, of this year, um, basically we add support for Bluetooth low energy, and also we fix uh, bugs related to Android PC and iOS. Um, basically, you can see here when uh, you have the slides available, 
um, the links where you can get those uh, the SDK um, from um, basically a website. So what we have done so far this year in our LinkOS SDK, we came from to uh, version 2.9 to 2.10 and to 2.11 now. So we have it done uh, different uh, enhancements to our SDK. We have it at uh, uh, Bluetooth, uh, second Bluetooth channel 2.9. We have it uh, at the driverless USB support for PC SDK in version 10. Uh, we have it at Xamarin support, as I mentioned before, in 2.10. Um, what basically what we have it done in 2.11 are uh, very nice things. One of those is uh, we have it at all of the developer demos for Bluetooth low energy. We want to go through those later. Um, we add support for Bluetooth uh, data and status channels. One of the most important things they want to um, highlight today is that uh, the new SDK uh, have been improving the way that the, you do the discovery. So basically, is uh, with the new SDK, you will be able only to see Zebra printers. And we have a, a Bluetooth filter for that, and uh, for the uh, for basically that's the most important thing. One other thing that we want to highlight today is graphic conversion. It's one of the um, most uh, frequent uh, requests that developers have done before, and we have uh, heard those things, and we want to um, support and solve that issue with this new SDK. We also can create load and backup profiles of the printers. So we want to go through a, a just sample code to see how that works. We have a optimized multi-channel connections. And we have it at the multi-part uh, multi for method, but that is transparent to developers. And what it basically means is basic uh, intelligence that we have it to our SDK to uh, automize um, most of the um, commands just to identify printers, language, and um, basic configuration of the printers when we implement those methods. In iOS, we have a, a, a enhanced printer language detection, and we have it uh, fit some box. In Xamarin, we have it uh, fit some box too. So the new things, uh, the new, the most important thing that we want to uh, highlight today is uh, Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, with Bluetooth Low Energy, um, basically this Bluetooth Low Energy is working in 2.4 gigahertz. Um, it, we recommend basically to work with Bluetooth Low Energy just with uh, light data transfers, and uh, we recommend to use this with very low data transmission, small tags, small labels and a small logos. We don't recommend this for a high uh, quantity of or large uh, graphics. Um, we have implemented this with a server customized Bluetooth low energy service. What we are doing today is we're going to go through this and and, um, and show those changes that we have done in, in Android and PC Java. Um, we have improved uh, the discovery method and start to check it. And uh, we want to review also the developer demos that we have done. One of the most important things that uh, I want to highlight here is uh, the Bluetooth Low Energy uh, is working with a Protocol 4.0, but uh, now the only printer that we support with uh, Bluetooth Low Energy uh, are the CD400 series and the CQ500 series. I'm going to stop here just to do a small, um, a small demo. I'm going to show you a small demo and how we have it done those things. So basically, did you see on my screen? We have uh, developed two uh, um, Android demos, one for the standard one and the new one for Bluetooth Low Energy. I'm going to go through this new one. And uh, basically, uh, as you see, most of the things are this, uh, similar to the uh, standard SDK developer demo, but there are some things that have a chance to work with Bluetooth Low Energy. I'm going to just focus in connectivity. So I'm going to go to connectivity. And I'm gonna discover printers. And when you, when I do this process, uh, that will show up only my uh, low uh, Bluetooth low energy printers. At this, uh, next to my desk, I have one uh, CQ520 printer, 
and also one uh, CD 410 printer. I'm gonna do uh, just a short test with the uh, Bluetooth low energy uh, C uh, CD 510. It's doing the whole process and it's printing. The same thing with the 2818, that is my CQ500 printer. I'm going to do that with my CQ500 printer too. Just simple test. Doing connection, determine printer language, and sending to print. So I'm going to go in detail with the most important changes that we have implemented for this demo. Other thing that I want to highlight here before to continue is we can do all of this configuration using our printer setup utility tool in Android. You can, I have here connected my uh, CD410 in Bluetooth Low Energy and I can do all of those changes of configuration of my printer using this, print, this uh, tool very easily. So, yet, uh, while this process is done, I'm going to just show how the, uh, on your left, you will see how we added the new folder for the, for the new, um, um, new developer demo. So you will see on the left, what you will have on, on your left, you will see all of the directories that we have at. So after the Android first, the first folder is basically for the standard way to work with Android. And we have created a new folder where you can get all of the demos and the libraries that we have implemented for Android Bluetooth Low Energy. So on your right, just basically, uh, you can see now that uh, the application just get into the printer. And I also, I can here, you see how I can modify the configuration of my printer very easily. So you see on the bottom. Uh, you will see that it's a control mode smart. Smart, yes, basically we have decided this for Bluetooth uh, low energy. This printer only comes in Bluetooth, so that's the reason because you see that uh, um, low grade. And in the bottom, on the top, you can select. Basically, the configuration is you want to do an authorized uh, case encryption or authorized case encryption. So with this, I just finished with this demo, and I'm going to go with the slides. So what you saw here basically is how you can discover the printers in Bluetooth Energy and the printers that we have support. We have support the uh, CD400, uh, the CD series, CD400 series, and the CQ400 series. One of the things that we want to uh, highlight here too is that uh, the best practice for printing apps, app likes in the same way for Bluetooth Low Energy, even with mo uh, a strong focus and um, basically don't. Um, send large quantities of data transmission. We want to recommend is basically low data transmission, avoid large graphics, and basically we have, uh, you can see, you can do a status check. So you can keep your bidirectional communication with uh, Bluetooth low energy perfectly well. One of the things is, as a developer, most, most of the time is uh, when I receive my printer, I don't know if the printer is, uh, what kind of feature the printer has. One of the things that I can do and basi uh, basically is to identify them. Uh, with the um, all CV report, basically we can figure out quickly uh, what kind of features our printers come with. So on your left, I have one CQ520 and you can see how those features are there. So I can see that comes with uh, iOS, so MFI is present. Um, Bluetooth low energy is present, and, and the other uh, things are not present. So it's basically telling you what you can have uh, before to start to develop with those printers. On your right, you can see basically how the CD500R uh, comes with just basically uh, with uh, no of those, uh, none of those features. We went through those uh, with the tool that I explained to you and how basically uh, set up the printers. The, the most important thing is smart. Smart just uh, um, comes for the Bluetooth low energy. Uh, there are three uh, categories, so smart ready. Smart ready is supposed to cover both. 
So Bluetooth Low Energy and Standard Bluetooth and Classic that's basically for Standard Bluetooth. Okay, now let's go to the code. So basically in Discovery you will see basically two files. One is Bluetooth uh, eDiscovery and the other one is Discovery Result Lit. In, Disco in Bluetooth uh, LE Discovery, the most important libraries that we want to focus is and we want to use for communication. So you will see here um, that we are using the Bluetooth LE Discover, and that's basically what we want to have uh, for the uh, for this uh, demo or um, and for the new demos that you have. Um, on the bottom part, we have a discovery result list. In the discovery result list, we want to highlight basically uh, the same thing. Discovery printer Bluetooth uh, low energy and discovery um, basically that's the only one that we are working in Bluetooth low energy. The other libraries are the same that you used to use before. The other part when we talk about the uh, connectivity demo, there are here more libraries that you need to use in order to implement um, Bluetooth low energy. So we have basically uh, discovery uh, printer Bluetooth low energy. We have Bluetooth Low Energy Discover and Bluetooth LE Connection. So th those are basically the three ones that we need to use for uh, implementation with Bluetooth Low Energy. One of the important things with Bluetooth Low Energy when we ask what is different against uh, how uh, what's worked before with the standard Bluetooth is that uh, Android requires to work in, with contests. Uh, most of the developers, Android developers, may know that there's something new that comes with Android. And it's basically what uh, for the implementation with Bluetooth Low Energy we are doing, or we are using that kind of capability in our software. So we we need to implement the contest in our connection methods. So we are doing contest here, finding printer with discovery, and we are also fi uh, doing um, um, all of the discovery Bluetooth discovery printer in the uh, the bottom part, doing all of that with also contest. In connectivity demo, you can see here we keep the same um, method, uh, way we did for a standard Bluetooth, but in addition to that, as I mentioned before, uh, we are adding uh, basically what, uh, the context that we need. So that field that uh, you see here is new for the connectivity in Android Bluetooth Low Energy. So let's take a look to the Bluetooth Low en Energy Connection class in detail. As I explained to you, we have three constructors. And uh, the first one you see only with the MAC address. We have the second construct, uh, constructor with MAC address and Android context. And the third one, when you can uh, take, uh, you can manage the time for reading, um, for waiting. And in addition, you need to use context for this. So the important thing is you're using the first one you need to first use uh, the function uh, that we call um, set contest in order to use the first one. So um, you cannot use a Bluetooth connection as, uh, only MAC address without set the contest before. Okay, what is new with the Bluetooth Low uh, uh, Energy SDK? There are uh, three different ways to work with connections. The first one is a uh, Bluetooth connection, and you will have um, basically connecting the MAC address and using context here. This allows you basically do printing. When you use Bluetooth status connection, Bluetooth status connections allows you to get the status of the printers, but no uh, uh, allows you to do printing. So this part that uh, we want to clarify is a tool that we will you uh, allows you to work in parallel, and basically we do that with the multi-channel. With multi-channel, basically what we are doing is creating a channel for printing and another channel only for status. One of the other things that we want to highlight here is basically uh, Bluetooth Low Energy SDK also use a universal unique identifier uh, for the connections too. Okay, let's go now with uh, class printer utility, graphics conversion. That's mm, one of the most uh, common questions that we have received in the last uh, few years uh, from developers uh, help, uh, when they ask to provide some way to, pro, uh, to have that class. And we did that. So we implement that in uh, this SDK. And uh, just to mention here, you will find that in the printer utility side. 
and, uh, and you will see two versions, two methods, one conversion graphic and one conversion graphic where you can set up the, uh, the width and the height. The, the, basically, the libraries that you're using for doing this, you will uh, you will see normally an image, so Zebra Image Factory, Zebra Image, the way that normally you work with image, and uh, Zebra Printer Factory, Zebra Printer Link OS. That's basically the ones that you need to use to get the printer working in, in Link OS. And then uh, printer utility with the new two methods, the way the way that you want to uh, use it. One of the things on the bottom, you see how the uh, multi-platform method is doing. In here, um, you see basically what is the end result of this file. What it's doing is doing the conversion and creating the header in GRF. And when you see this command in, CP in CPL, basically you are saving this in directory E with the graphics into the printer. So we are making all of this for you guys to use it. Basically, here is an example, a uh, very simple code that we just uh, built to show the advantage to use graphic conversion in case that you need it. One of the things is only this is available in our version in Android and PC Java. As, uh, basically here what we want to just uh, point out is you define how you want to do the conversion depending on the extension of the file. So in this particular case, I tell into the method that I'm going to do the conversion to GRF. Is I want to do conversion to PNG, so I'm going to just change the extension of this to PNG. One other thing that you need to know is when I send this file to the printer, the internal uh, intelligence of the SDK makes uh, the adaption, uh, so adapts the conversion of the uh, file, it is uh, CPL or CPCL. So that is done transparent to the developer. Okay, let's move to the next one create profile. So uh, one of the things that we want to do with this on your side, uh, this is profile manager, but that's not the profile manager from our uh, mobile side. Profile, um, basically what we are creating here is the profile with the, or copying all of the parameters of the printer and making this easier for developers or for apps to create clumps of those uh, printers and as I want to, for example, set up multiple printers in a um, uh, retail industry or retail warehouse, I want to um, uh, convert a standard um, a configuration of printer for 500 printers. So basically, that's the way to do it. So first, the first part is create the profile. The second part is load the profile. And the third part is also is I want to do a backup. In this particular example code, uh, you can see how easy it is to work with this. So what you need to use is basically LinkOS printer, uh, so the the Zebra printer, LinkOS library, and use create uh, the the methods create profile, load backup. You need to do a backup of your profile and load profile. Load profile is basically downloading that to uh, another printer that you want to make a clone. It's very simple to use. Um, we don't expect you guys. Uh, um, implement all of those today, but uh, we want to just uh, highlight those new features for you so you know those are available so you can work with them uh, in the next project. Other things that we want to highlight here, with uh, uh, multi-channel doesn't come, so it's not new with the version 2.11, we did a lot of improvement, but one of the important things here that we want to highlight is that you can implement all of these nice things using the class connection builder. So connection builders basically create to you different ways to uh, uh, open communication with the printers. And um, important thing on your right, you see basically the uh, uh, priority that we do those connections. So start from the top to the bottom. The most important or the first one that will do the, the connection part of the uh, connection builder will look for TCP multi. Uh, after that, TCP, TCP status and going on. On the bottom, you see many different ways to configure the multi-channel. Now, what we want to do is basically to see a very simple code where you can see the advantages to work with this. On the top part, you're seeing that we are using the TCP multi with the IP address and the two ports that we are using. And 9100 is basically the one that we are using for printing, and 9200 is the one that we want to use for status. So in this particular example, what you're seeing is um, while we are sending some data to the printer to be printed, at the same time, we are getting a status 
of the printer. So those two uh, processes are doing simultaneously, and um, at, uh, so you don't need to wait to finish with one to go with the other one. Those are basically the advantages to work with multi-channel. Now, in review, we don't have uh, just to uh, uh, go in detail what we have done so far. We don't have done changes to Windows Mobile CE, neither BlackBerry SDKs. We don't have it done changes to the uh, um, NFC that we have done before. We don't have it done changes to the command line. We uh, we don't have it done changes to web sockets, so Cloud Connect system. That's keep the same. What we have it done. So just to summarize this, we have it done some. Uh, add, we have add all of the new support for Bluetooth Low Energy for Android and PC Java. We have had the at all of the developer demos for Bluetooth Low Energy. We have improved all of the multi-channel connections for Android and PC. We have fixed some, uh, some bugs in Android, uh, Java, iOS, Xamarin. We, we are continue doing that. Our expectation is to have a very solid product for you. Uh, we expect that you can take advantage of those improvements. And also what we have done is basically uh, the idea we have done uh, during this year is uh, doing more frequently release of our SDK. We have a pass basically from uh, two releases in the past to basically three and four, hopefully uh, for the for next year. And the mo one of the important things that we have a highlight here is with the new discovery methods for printers, only you will see Zebra printers. You don't see other devices in Bluetooth. That's one of the other advantages that we have. Okay, let's take a look to another SDK features. We have also a Printer Connect in action for the new release. It's possible that we have this incorporated into our SDK, so you will have all of the libraries available there. Uh, basically, what does Print Connect is uh, a driver that you install in your uh, Android device, but at the same time, it's helping you to build strong um, printing apps using only five com uh, intents. We want to do maybe in the future another webinar to explain all of the advantages of this uh, uh, Print Connect tool. So for today, basically, we want to highlight the most important features. Um, basically, um, sells a lot of time for developers to do um, mm, development work with our printers. Um, it's just reducing um, maybe uh, 50 or 60 uh, classes that we have with the Android SDK to five intents. That's the most advantage here. Other things that we want to highlight, summary. We have been working very hard uh, this year to have this uh, plugin available for you guys. We have those available now in our SDK too. And um, the idea with this is made you work very easy. So you can even work from um, your um, uh, in working in C or that in net environment to applications in uh, iOS or either in Android. So basically what we have done here is um, make all of the most important things, find printers, check status, and print very easily using Xamarin. Even we can tell you that we have also uh, the first uh, application validated from one of our uh, Europe uh, ISVs uh, using Xamarin. So it's very easy to implement, and we recommend you guys to use it. Um, for more details, in Xamarin, we have previous uh, a previous webinar, so you can go through our list of webinars and you can see all of their functionality there with more detail. With WebSockets, all of the WebSockets part, just going to show here, this is the library that you will see into um, uh, the multiplatform SDK. All of the multi uh, WebSockets, you can find that very easily here in um, version two, uh, 2.11. You have the demos, documentation, libraries, everything that you need to do your WebSockets implementation is in here. It's very easy. It's in the link OS SDK. You go to Web Services and you can get there. All of the uh, sample code libraries that you need to use to do the implementation. It's a bidirectional network protocol. Uh, it's basically based in WebSockets technology. 
and uh, allows you to implement all of the uh, best practices also, uh, checking a status, uh, fine printers, um, mm, send, uh, um, you can set up the, uh, you, even you can download firmware through this. One of the uh, most important release that we have done just uh, one month ago, I just want to go, maybe, oh, my, mo, most of you have it seen the webinar, is uh, Browser Print. So Browser Print allows you to cover other uh, aspects that Cloud Connect cannot do. So um, Cloud Connect basically works in the back-end server of your application, so basically works on the server side. And, um, but when you need to work on the front side of your application is when you need to use Browser Print. Browser Print basically is working, uh, the first release that we did is uh, comes in PC and basically connects in, form, in bidirectional way with the printers, uh, uh, most of the LinkOS printers, but in addition to that with the legacy printers. So uh, allows to solve basically most of the core connectivity issues that we used to have with developers before on the uh, front side, uh, from end of the uh, websites. We provide this with sample code, uh, mm, and no, allows to print it from multiple apps, and um, everything is ready when you do the download of the application. So I am just finished, and we are ready, guys, for questions and comments. All right, thanks, Manuel. Really appreciate it. Um, we do have a couple of questions for Bill for Bill before we get to yours, Manuel. If we can take care of those first. Okay, let's go. All right, uh, Bill, you still up? All right, awesome. Yep, so, uh, so yeah, the first question was: Will the scanner connection listener also work with the RS five hundred seven? I believe. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. That that was yes. Sorry, you and Manuel were talking. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes, I believe so. And then the next question is, um, is the RSM API supported uh, as per Windows Mobile so that you can, Windows Mobile, so that you can get the battery level of the RS6000? Okay. I, I don't believe so. I'm pretty sure um, the, the list I'd given was pretty detailed in, in what it's capable of at this point. Okay. Uh, I don't believe you can pull uh, battery levels and stuff. Okay. All right. Um, were there any other questions on the EMDK side? If you can type those in, I think the rest are for you, Manuel. So we'll, we'll get to we'll get to those. But uh, I, I have I have a strong thing today, so hopefully we can answer all of those questions. All right, great. Um, so the first question was: When do you expect to provide printing to Zebra printers for Windows 10? Um, UWP app, so it can be used from computers, tablets, and phones. Rowan? I can, um, we are working on um, trying to scope out the work for that, and it is something that we are, are looking at to do in the future, but um, again, at this point, it's a matter of um, scoping it out and trying to figure out what kind of work would be involved in that. Um, as right now, we know that there are some issues with using our current SDKs in that environment. Okay. Well, um, Go ahead, Manuel. No, yes, well, basically, uh, one of the, yes, uh, um, we have done some internal testing. And um, basically, just to let you know, guys, uh, with the, uh, our browser print, um, this is informal testing, but uh, we want to just mention that uh, it's working with uh, Windows in bit uh, um, mobile um, environment. So it's another way that you can use browser print for your apps in Windows mobile. Okay. And to clarify, we do not have any approved formal projects that we are actively working on for Windows 10. We're still evaluating the business case as well as scoping the technical needs. Got it. All right. Thanks, Dan. Now, I, I guess one other question I do have, um, you know, Robin, you might be able to answer this. Do we have Windows 10 support in the Java uh, SDK? 
In the, the Java PC SDK, that is a very good question, which I will have to look up and find out. Uh, uh, one more thing, James, do you know that? James? Uh, I'm sorry, I was, uh, <laughs> I was distracted by something else. What yes, was the question? Uh, yes, no, the question is with uh, our Windows, uh, Windows PC, uh, our uh, Java SDK in PC support Windows 10? Do you know um, that? I believe so, um, in so much as the, uh, the, you know, we have sort of Java support, right? Uh, and and uh, as far as I know, um, everything works. I know we've done a certain amount of testing on that, um, but I don't know that we've done exhaustive testing. So um, I would say in general that if you're doing PC Java and you have, you know, a up-to-date JRE that it should work. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, do we have more questions? Yes, there's a few more questions. Um, this question is regarding the connectivity demo app. Uh, does it support non-Link OS printers like the GKGS420? James, could you help me with that one? Um, I believe that it will. Um, the, uh, the, the the connectivity demo, um, actually a fair number of those demos should um, things in the developer demos should support um, all the way back to legacy because we're not doing anything sort of link OS specific in there. Right, okay. All right, Manuel, two other questions um, regarding Bluetooth. Okay. Uh, is it advisable to use a thread to do Bluetooth search and then how long does it take the SDK to find printers? James, will you help me with that too? Um, so the um, you can certainly thread it off. Um, basically, uh, the API is sort of structured asynchronously, so you're getting uh, you will get the responses uh, back as they come in from the radio. Um, as for how long it takes, it's more or less device dependent, uh, so it's going to be dependent on the and specific Android device and how fast the you know, specific radio on that device is. Um, basically, we are handing them back as fast as Android is handing them to us. So. Okay. All right. Um, is, are there any other questions? I don't really see anything else. I think we covered them all. There was just a few other comments regarding the um, uh, Windows 10. It was kind of geared more towards mobile, not so much on the uh, PC desktop side. So just to give you guys a heads up, uh, but I think Dan said we, we don't have any real official uh, plans for support on that yet. So um, any any other questions or or, um, or comments from from the attendees or anybody else on the phone? Uh, I would like to make this question to the attendees. Uh, any of the attendees has any kind of project working with Bluetooth Low Energy? Bluetooth Low Energy, anybody have any projects? Um, let's see if you can, uh, I guess, enter it in the chat so we can capture it. Um, and then, Manuel, maybe you can follow up with them. Okay, good. We want to know. Um, we want you guys to have the, the ability to work with those uh, new features. And uh, hopefully, um, we will be working with you guys in, in your implementation um, integration project with Stevita Printers. Um, we have a team that we will support you for all of those integration issues that may you have in the future. I don't know. Do you have an additional question? We have more. Yeah, questions? no, that's that's it. Um, I don't have any any questions other uh, other than what we just covered. I don't see anything else coming in. Um, so I wanted to thank everybody today, uh, and presenters as well, Bill and Manuel, for presenting. Uh, you know, be sure to tune into the next one. It's it's in October, the first week in October. Um, let's see, when is the next one? It's October fifth. Is the next uh, Dev Talk. So we'll be covering Enterprise Browser uh, for those of you who are interested. So, all right. So uh, look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks again, Bill and Manuel. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.